How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about stream elements and I'm just going to be doing a brief overview of stream elements. I'm not going to go into details on everything on here. That will be in later videos. I just want to give you guys an idea of what stream elements looks like in 2021. Now you can use stream elements for Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So there are different settings that you're going to have for each one, especially for Facebook. There's not a lot of stuff that is offered for Facebook when it comes to stream elements. So right here, this is what it looks for on the dashboard for Twitch. So you'll be able to see all your different stats up here. You'll have a graph so that we'll also be able to see like when people are following and everything like that. And then you have your activity feed down here. Now over here, if you have the actual like stream elements bot there, you can either mute the bot or you can have it leave your channel, but you're gonna want the bot to be a part of your channel so that way it can do all of its other stuff that it needs to. You can also set up your stream title and your game that you're playing and you can update it here as well. Now up on the very top left corner here, if I click on this, it's gonna then show the other options that you can sign into. So as you can see, I'm signed into my other you know other accounts here so if i go to youtube it's going to have a similar layout but it doesn't have as much information there so it shows how many people have subscribed and so on and so forth you still have the actual bar graph and then you have your activity feed and the ability of parting the channel or parting the bot from the channel but you don't have the ability of updating the uh, title in the game so that's one thing that is missing now if i go to facebook for Facebook, it's going to have, you know, same information here, but now it doesn't have any way of having the bot to be a part of the channel. You can't update anything. So as you can see, some things have changed, but you still have the actual grid or bar graph and then your activity feed. So that is kind of the difference between those three in that aspect. So if I go to activity feed, activity feed is just basically what I just showed you on the first tab, but it's in its own dedicated area. But you can also reset the session or widget data. So if I click on the widget data, this is going to be everything from your labels, goals, session data, your totals. So if you have like any of these type of goals, like a subscriber goal or a membership goal or anything like that, you can reset that to zero every single month and it will just reset all these things for you. Same thing with your session data and so on and so forth. So if I go back to activity feed, I can also hit reset session and it will do it there too. Now for OBS Live, this is what I use on OBS Studio. This is what allows me to make it seem like it is Streamlabs OBS without having that big bloatware that, you know, Slobs gives everybody. So with this, you'll be able to have your chat, you can have the activity feed, you can have a music channel option. And the other beautiful thing about OBS Studio is you have the, avail the ability of making it use these custom docs which i have done in a video before showing you guys how to use custom docs when it came to trying to bring in your youtube chat and you can use custom docs for just about anything there are probably is going to be some limitations but it's definitely something to kind of toy around with for your theme gallery this is where you'll be able to find free overlays so you have the full stream themes so you'll have the full entire stream package so if i click on this one it's going to give me all of this that you see here. So the animated alert, it's going to give me all of these scenes and everything like that. So it's going to give you all of those things. And I've done a video on how to install these. So once you have what you want, you'll go into my overlays. You can use your own existing overlays if you want to, but you can also install them as well. So they come into each one of them is an individual page. So it's not going to be just one thing. So I've already gone through this in another video. I'm not going to go through it in this one, but just know that you have to install them individually. Uh, but I'll link that video in the card above and also in the description below. So you guys can take a look at that. So programs, this is where they'll go and have some type of options for you guys. If there's something that interests you, like for this one right now, they have it where you can partner up with Magic the Gathering and you can be part of their creator program. And I don't know the full details of what goes into that, but it's something that if you guys create content for Magic the Gathering, you can try to apply for it and be part of their program. If there's any challenges, they'll be listed here. For your tipping and everything, this is going to be to set up for your donations and also your merch. Loyalty settings. Loyalty settings is pretty cool. You can go and change the currency name. You can give it an amount, 
how much subscribers get, followers, cheers, bits, so on and so forth. And leaderboards will show you how many or who's been pretty much the most loyal when it comes to the points. You can have your own stream store. You can set up contests, giveaways. Now for module, module allows you to add different types of interactive chat games, basically. So these are always fun to have, like slot machine and dual and eight ball and stuff like that. For user management, it's pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to manage the users. And then for your chat commands, you can have the default ones. You can also create your own. And when they're in blue, it means they're enabled. Gray means they're not enabled. Here's the user management again. And then here's all the variables of how you can go and set stuff up for specific commands. You can have a spam filter if you want to keep things clean within your chat or certain words you don't want. And then timers, timers allow you to have certain things come up whenever you are getting a lot of people chatting or a certain time duration. So like, for example, if I've been getting at least 28 lines, so 28 people to chat something, this will display or it's going to display in 28 minutes. Either way, this will get popped up. And this is really handy for whenever you guys are wanting to have like maybe your discord or certain chat rules or different types of links. That is what timers are really useful for. And then you have your chat stats, media requests, profile page, and then your social media. This stuff isn't really that important. And that is pretty much the overview for the Twitch side. So if I go back up to the dashboard, we're going to go and take a look at the YouTube side. So you can kind of see what changes there. So obviously you still have the activity feed, the overlays and stuff will stay the same, challenges stay the same, but you can see now that the tipping is a little different. So if I go back, you can see that the tipping's got more stuff here, right? Go back to YouTube, we're missing something. You still have your commands and everything, so you can still use that. And then you also only have profile page and social. So you don't have media and all that other stuff that was there. Now, if I go to Facebook, Facebook is also going to be pretty bare bones. So same stuff here, same stuff there. Tipping everything is going to be the same, but now there's no commands. You have no way of using any type of commands on Facebook when it comes to stream elements. And I don't even think there is any other bot out there that even lets you use any type of commands. I know that Facebook has their own built-in commands, but in terms of using a third party bot to be able to do stuff like that, I don't see any options really out there and I've tried finding some. But you still have your media requests, which YouTube didn't have, and you have your profile page and your social media. So that is pretty much the overview of that. Now I am gonna go into other videos, other details on some other things like understanding the theme gallery, creating your own overlay, um, I'll go into the actual, uh, let me go over here so I can show you guys the full stuff here. Um, I'll go into the loyalty settings for you guys that are over on Twitch. And I also believe the loyalty settings are also on YouTube, but I could be wrong. Let me check. Yeah, so that's also missing there too. So that is something that's only going to be for um, Twitch. So... No point system there. Um, so Twitch definitely gives you a lot more options. Twitch has always been known for giving you guys more things to kind of work with. But that I, I personally enjoy using stream elements just because it's been more reliable for me for the time that I've used it. And I love the fact that I can have all of my overlays and everything be web based versus being on my computer locally because it means less of a stress on my computer. But there's a lot of other videos that I want to get, get into when it comes to stream elements. But if you found this video helpful, be sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more educational content when it comes to streaming, teaching you guys a technical side. And if you ever have any questions or if you want to just be part of the community, uh, be sure to go ahead and jump into the Discord and also follow me over on Twitter. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next video.